sit so much, do their roids bleed a lot? <clears throat> Says what? Since coaches sit so much, do their roids bleed a lot? What are you, a smart guy? Come on, come on let's go. Come on, let's go. You will love Stuttering John today because... This is about the third or fourth time he's encountered Mr. Lasorda. You know, John cut his hair. This is why you'll love this. John cut his hair, and John doesn't look like Stuttering John anymore. Mm -hmm. Stuttering John shows up to interview Tommy Lasorda. Tommy was promoting something or other. And I guess, you know, there weren't that many interviewers around. Okay, not much press covering the event. So the public relations guy was thrilled because not only does John now show up with a microphone, he shows up with a camera. <laughs> so they usher John, they treat him like a VIP, they usher John into a private room where he can have a one-on-one -on -one with Tommy Lasorda. Uh -oh. So now he's trapped in the room. Oh, he can't oh, just run away. Oh, no. oh. This must be brutal. <sighs> It's, it's really great because we played it smart this time. We had given really John good. about five or six really bad questions. Uh -huh. And then I was talking to Fred and Jackie, and they said, you know what, let's ask him some, like, like three or four nice questions. Softball him. Softball him. Yeah. So it was good. So John actually gets in there and asks these sort of weird, but not baseball questions, but weird questions. But Tommy Lasorda's into it. Uh -huh. Goofy, but don't get thrown sure. out. But what? if you remember the last time we asked a fart question, Tommy Lasorda freaked. He flips. Oh, every time. And this time again, we ask him a fart question. And he does the same exact move. He hears the question perfectly, and he goes, what? <laughs> you know, he has to hear it again, and then he freaks. <laughs> but this time, John's trapped in a room with him. Oh, no. when, when John's asking him those first three questions that yeah. are, like, normal, yeah. he's, like, so proud and taken with himself. <laughs> yeah. You know, people are really interested in me. Yeah, right, not just baseball. Exactly. I've, I've, I've actually overcome my baseball image, and I've now become I'm a man of the world. bigger than baseball. <laughs> yeah. All right, Stuttering John was with uh, Tommy Lasorda yesterday, and what makes this so great, this particular Stuttering John episode, is that uh, Stuttering John actually got treated like a human being for the first time in his life. <laughs> yeah, he, oftentimes he goes out and he says it's really horrible yeah. being him. So so uh, Tommy Lasorda was doing what, promoting a book? No, he was doing a cookout. He was showing people how to cook. Isn't he fat again? Well, he was sitting down. He looked a little chubby, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> but, but you know what happened? Like, when we got there, it was, it was at a mall, and there was, like, a bunch of people all sitting down, you know, all in front of this little, you know, hot plate. And yeah, was, you and know, probably no one was there. Well, there's like 50 people there, yeah. you know, sitting down, and then like. So they were probably thrilled when you showed up. Yeah, they were just like, oh, you, got, you know, I'll tell you what. Instead of interviewing him when he gets out, why don't you just come back and and we, you know, we'll still bring you back and wow. you can get a one-on-one -on -one with him. So they brought us all the way back to this little private room. Wow. And we and we passed all the security, went right back. Oh <laughs> man, that probably made you more nervous. Oh, I was. Oh, I forget it. Okay, uh, now that you're fat again, do you have to give the money back? I'm not like fat that? again. Don't give me that stuff, buddy. I'm not fat. So go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Lured by his riches. I love you. He made her his bride. We're going to have a baby. She entered his world. Don't go changing the furniture. And became locked inside. Eric! Get out. I don't know what's real anymore. And now... I'm not gonna let you leave me. She must fight. I hate you. Or else she will die. <laughs> a Cry in the Night. This Sunday night, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, only on E. The police took her away to jail and everything. She's just posed nude. Get every buck you can. The Gossip Show, weeknights at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, right here on E. On August 25th, Clive Barker invites you to witness the future of terror. Clive Barker's Lord of Illusions. Rated R. Starts Friday, August 25th at theaters everywhere. It's new, it's weird, it stinks! Yes, everybody's playing new stink and stare from Barks Root Beer. The 3D game that stinks when you scratch it and turns 3D when you stare at it. Free inside specially marked 12 packs of Barks Root Beer, the one with bite. Scratch and sniff some musty old bones and you might see a 3D skull. Cool. Stare at a 3D cow and smell the freshly cut hay. Keep staring because you could win $10,000. So pick up Barks today and play Stink and Stare. It'll change the way you look at root beer. Welcome to the Redneck Choice Awards, brought to you by Showtime. You might be a redneck if... Starring Jeff Foxworthy, and here's Bud Lightman. Hey, folks, your ballots are in, so let's get to the awards. Our first category is Best Redneck Video. 
Let's look at top nominee Jeff Foxworthy for You Might Be a Redneck If. If your richest relative buys a new house and you have to help take the wheels off of it, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you've ever taken a beer to a job interview, <laughs> if you refer to the fifth grade as my senior year, <laughs> you might be a redneck. And the winner is Jeff Foxworthy. Woo! I can't believe it. Hey, I checked the envelopes. You won them all. Oh, I have to tour the whole country. Hey, wait, I, I could just sell my Showtime video, You Might Be a Redneck Gift, through this special TV offer. It's only $19.95, so call now to order. Now you're in a private room. You're doing, oh, they're treating you like a real human being. It's a one-on-one -on -one with Tommy Lasorda. And you have a, you know what also helps is the fact that you have a cameraman with you. Oh well. yeah, oh yeah. definitely. And 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 the and the publicist is a girl. She's so happy. Oh, she knows. You know, she's willing to offer us her left arm. She's so, right. She's so, you know. <laughs> because she's so happy, it makes her look good. Yeah, you know, because we were the only crew there. Yeah. And, 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 <laughs> oh, and then man. Tommy's sitting down at a table, signing some Tommy Lasorda pictures. Yeah. Well, it, you know, and, at least we had written some. Instead of just hitting him with the first question. So he doesn't recognize John at all. Doesn't recognize John at all. And, you know, John doesn't have the long hair anymore. And John doesn't look like John. John doesn't recognize John. No, I have a suit on, the glasses. Yeah. <laughs> so he looks like a journalist. <laughs> and he's got a cameraman with him, which is even more impressive. Oh, that's so funny. And Tommy Lasorda was like, wow, you know, hey, this is great. I'm being interviewed. And the first couple of questions, we kind of ask him generic, sort of uh, worldly questions where he's not being asked about baseball. I think he was very proud that he was now being turned to for... That people were looking at him as something more than a baseball player. They talked to him about other issues. Right. He's bigger than baseball, Robin. So let's go now. Where is this taking place? This is at Stearns in the a &S Mall. Okay. Tommy Lasorda. <laughs> what is he, the manager of... The, the, Dodgers. Manager the Dodgers. The Dodgers, right. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi, Tommy. Can I ask you a couple questions? That's okay. Sure. What's the last book, uh, you know, that you read? The last book that I read? Uh, Mo Berg. You know Mo Berg? No, who's that? Mo Berg was a major league baseball player and a major league coach, and he became a spy for the United States during the uh, Second World War. A very interesting man. man who was very, very educated. And... Um, I should ask him when he read it, probably 1954. Yeah. <laughs> this was right after the war that he read it. Mo Berg. <laughs> you know who Mo Berg is? But you know, I, what cracks me up is that guys like Tommy are always trying to uh, point out that, you know, baseball players aren't dumb. Yeah. See, Mo Berg was a baseball player, and he was a coach. He was a very educated man, being yeah. a spy for the country. <laughs> yeah, see, we could do lots of stuff. <laughs> we just don't chew tobacco and scratch our nuts. Made it uh, to this country and wanted him to... Tommy can rap, man. Oh, he could rap. If you... He you goes know. on and on. <laughs> Go to be a lawyer. I guess he went to Princeton. Very brilliant man, but he wanted to play baseball. And uh, it was a very interesting book. What's your favorite music piece? My favorite music piece? I'd have to say that um, uh, Frank Sinatra and I'll do it my way. If you, you know, you've been a great manager, you know, what would you put on your epitaph if you, you know? A Dodger Stadium was his address, but every ballpark was his home. Oh, he's mm -hmm. thought about that. Oh. See, I told you he'd dig that. <laughs> oh, man. Waiting for somebody to ask me that. <laughs> man, he was, you know, I would have no idea what to put on my right, epitaph. but he has thought that out. Wow. That was impressive. I guess as you near that time. Yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> a few, you know. Dodger Stadium was his address, but every ballpark was his home. Wow, he's digging you. No, he's hanging. You know, it, I thought he'd get annoyed just you asking him what your favorite music piece is. So you did know? I. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was afraid of. Yeah, you, you know? liked it. What was the answer? I didn't even pay attention. Frank Sinatra's uh, My, My Way. way. Yeah. My Way. No, that's a great piece. <laughs> <laughs> I turned the radio right off if that comes up. <laughs> okay. All right, well, here we go. I guess you yeah, ran out of nice yeah, questions. That's it. <laughs> it's all downhill from here. Yeah. Didn't we think that the tombstone question was going to piss him off? Yeah, well, I reworded it. I didn't just consult you guys on this. I changed the, the tombstone. What, instead of what you want on your tombstone, I just changed it. What is your epitaph? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Good choice. I was thinking, like, maybe we should have three questions that don't piss him off. Right. Well, those are beauties. <laughs> Who knew he'd have an answer for any of them? <laughs> I'd be like, well, what's your last book you read? Uh, well, can I count my own? 
or the comic book I read? Yeah, I read comic books. <laughs> What's your favorite music piece? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, uh, now that you're fat again, do you have to give the money back? I'm not there? fat again. Don't give me that stuff, buddy. I'm not fat, so go ahead. Okay. <laughs> now that you're fat again, do you have to give the money back to Slim Fast? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back. John, how do you do it? Did you, how it's did that feel? Hard. Were you sweating? Oh, God, I was, oh. I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> oh. He's sweating now. Oh. <laughs> Just listening to it. <laughs> Here we go. All right, let's get into it. All right, everybody strap right, in your seatbelt. All right, here we go, Rob. Because we're going to fly now. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> it's just so funny you got this one-on-one -on -one thing going with them. <laughs> yeah, you're in an echoey room all by yourself. I would have left. I just would have said, okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Lasorda. <laughs> You'd have never gotten past that epitaph question. I would have come back here and said, Howard, I couldn't get near Tommy Lasorda. It was unbelievable. There were 10 million people there. All right, here we go. Okay, uh, now that you're fat again, do you have to give the money back? I'm not fat again. Don't give me that stuff, buddy. I'm not fat, so go ahead. Okay. Since coaches sit so much, do their roids bleed a lot? <clears throat> Since what? Since coaches sit so much, do their roids bleed a lot? What are you, a smart guy? Come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Well, thanks, Tom. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, who's in the room? <laughs> Who is that in the well, room? if you listen, I'll play it back, that little part for you again. Is he sitting right? At, are you sitting at a table? Yeah, he's him? at a table, and I'm, I'm right next to him. Oh, oh, oh what are you, a smart guy? <laughs> what are you, a smart guy? Not as smart as you. <laughs> You're just like the police. are like, okay, let's go. <laughs> Exit you know why he didn't throw you out on the fat question? Because you the three questions before were so nice. That's what I'm saying. I thought mm. that maybe it was the goodwill built. He was feeling good, you know, and he wasn't ready. <laughs> To let that in. He, thought it was a he sounds like match. my dad. I'm, same with me. I'm waiting for him to yeah. just snap, you know. <laughs> what are you, a smart guy? Are you a smart guy? Hmm. What are you, a smart guy? Get him out of here. Jack, Does never... he ever recognize you as the person who no, has no, no, no. him every time he's been in New York? <laughs> yeah, because the only like... person who interviews him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You think he'd be wise by this time. I wonder when it hits him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But if you hear at the end, I think you could almost hear one of the publishers say, I think there's two people in there with them. Yeah, yeah, there's, no, it's a publisher. One of them says, I told you so. <laughs> like, like, I think one of them realized they it was John. They might have been having a debate about whether it was yeah. John. But the question's so nice, they go, nah, maybe it's not. Hmm, maybe it's who knows? <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Says what? Since coaches sit so much, do their roids bleed a lot? What are you, a smart guy? Come on, come on let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Well, thanks, Tom. Okay. <clears throat> All right, thank you. He goes, did I call it? <laughs> yeah, that's yes, what it is. Did I call did it? I call but, it. But that was a security guard because the, the, the security came back. Oh, I gotta hear that again. Come on. Well, thanks, Tom. Okay. Did I call it? <clears throat> All right, thank you. Did I call it? Yeah, yeah. I like how John has to repeat the question. That's even and poor John is like right, got one foot out the door. My you voice cracked in the first yeah, time. It's like. Yeah. Hi. I, I really believe that each time John hits Tommy with one of these questions, he can't believe what he heard. Yeah, because Tommy goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> he makes him repeat. And you know he heard the whole damn question. But he can't believe. Right. He, you know, he's thinking I, there's something wrong. Next time you interview Tommy Lasorda, I'm going to write you a question. And then when he says what, I'm going to give you like, oh. Another question? Uh, yeah, I'll give you like a nice question. <laughs> <laughs> Tickle your ass with a feather? <laughs> a particularly nasty weather, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, because you sit so much on the bench, you know, as a coach, do you avoid, you know, like something like that. You know? <laughs> okay, uh, now that you're fat again, do you have to give the money back? I'm not there? fat again. Don't give me that stuff, buddy. I'm not fat, so go ahead. Okay. Since coaches sit so much, do their roids bleed a lot? <clears throat> Since what? Since coaches sit so much, do their roids bleed a lot? What are you, a smart guy? Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Thanks, Tom. Okay. All right, thank you. You know the other thing? All right, thank you. Is that John is lowering his voice. He's trying to get this question past yeah. the other two wackos. I so think he's he, lowering his voice. Is that what it is? I thought, I figured if he whispered him that maybe Tommy wouldn't hear him either. <laughs> I'm hoping you're right. I'm hoping the publicists don't hear him. Yeah. It's yeah. <sighs> great. Well, good job, Stuttering John. Go for it. Thanks, well, man. we hope Tommy comes back soon. Oh, man. You know, I'm already excited about the next time John yeah. meets him. And, you know, <laughs> very, very, you know, you can see that a lot of reporters aren't interested in Time Loose Order. Oh. We're totally into him. <laughs> <laughs> we love him. <laughs> All right. You think that he's pretty soon going to figure out it's John every time? He's going to start seeing John in his sleep. <laughs> All right, very good, John. Congratulations. Another great interview. Hero of the stupid. <laughs> and we'll be back after these words. Is this what? 
Since coaches sit so much, do their roids bleed a lot? What are you, a smart guy? Come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Well, thanks, Tom. Okay. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, which way do we go? I don't know. We're going. How do we get out of here? Oh, yeah. Can you get security up here to get these guys out, please? I care okay. very much about the show. You don't feel good because you, you don't go to bed early. Has the now. level of the show gone down at all since I stopped dressing well? Yes. You're a liar. Video conferencing technology used in the production of The Howard Stern Show, provided by IBM. The inside world of entertainment is on E! Specials this month, Primetime's Brightest, Hollywood's Heart, The World's Sexiest Men, Roseanne Behind the Scenes, Sex, Sizzle and Sale, Male Models, Celebrity Fitness, Secret Lives of the Supermodels, Celebrity Beauty Secrets, and this Sunday, the stars are putting out their welcome mats, inviting us into their celebrity homes. Sunday at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. There's only one network that gets this close to Hollywood. E. I want a rock and roll all night. I want it every day. It's Guitar Rock, the most electrifying rock collection ever issued. No more Mr. Nice. Guitar Rock on cassette or compact disc for just $9.99. Here I am, rock you like a hurricane. Woman from Tokyo, she makes me see it. Then you'll have the chance to preview other Guitar Rock albums at no risk. So guitar Rock, call now to get yours. To order your Guitar Rock Classics album, call 1-800-417-1616 or send us $9.99 for one cassette or one CD, plus $3.50 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. The stars are putting out their welcome mats and inviting us into their celebrity homes. Sunday at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, only on E. The jobs of tomorrow are here, thousands of them waiting to be filled. But you have to know the fields they're in. And you have to have what it takes to master those fields. Because you can't get the jobs of tomorrow until you get the skills of today. Start by calling ITT Technical Institute. We'll send you an informative brochure on tomorrow's careers and what it takes to get them. Call 1-800-942-0099. When is a stamp not just a stamp? When it's the one you've been waiting for. The Maryland Stamp, now at your post office. Or call for our catalog. When is a stamp not just a stamp? When it brings a nation together. You won't want to split up our new Civil War stamps. Now at your post office. Or call for our catalog. Also, I received a fax yesterday that said, Hey, Howard, what happened to Bob Bowie? What's the story there? Uh, you, you yelled at him about two months ago and said, can you dress better for the guests and for representing the show? He did it for about a week, and now he's back to wearing his Sasa smelly T-shirts, and his, uh, he has stains all over them. We watch the E-show. We see what's going on. What happened? You, you know, this, this uh, faxer is right. Of course he's right. Monkey. Of course he's right. Well, what did happen? I don't know. That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Here, it even says, it says, uh... It's all, it's all smelly. It says, why is Fla Fla Fluly once again dressing like filth with his gravy-stained T-shirt? <laughs> I thought you would ask that he wears a shirt and tie. <laughs> that is the ugliest shirt he's wearing today. Yeah, I don't, what is that? I will take uh, heat for a lot of things, but I don't have gravy stains on my No, but I mean, look at that shirt. It's a T-shirt. Yeah, but come on. I admit, that I, I admit that I got lazy. What I started, I just got lazy. Yeah, it would look really good what, for a while. What I started doing was uh, limiting it. You know, I was dressing, I was dressing really well the day that guests came in. Yeah. And then, like, today, you know, we didn't have any guests, so... But, yeah, but... But then I just got down to, like, not dressing well at all. Yeah, I know. It's a, well, it's a headache, man. It's a headache, it's but, you know, sometimes work is a headache. 
Everything in your life's a headache lately. I don't know. I <laughs> <laughs> even that is too much for you. I mean, just bring one. You bring a sports coat at least. Okay. Because at one point you were wearing the t-shirts, but you had a jacket. Yeah, it right. looked, it looked a little right. better. All I know is, you know, Howard said do this, et cetera, et cetera. And one day the spin doctors were here, and then I was wearing a tie, and I don't know, it just became like the guy with the tie was a target to make fun of. Like they th they saw me as the guy in charge, and they just kept goofing on. Yeah, me. but that's the point. We have a guy in charge. And people were starting to treat you like you were in charge. People no. were asking you questions. No, no. Uh, Howard, I can tell you right now, no. it, it made no change. I mean, I'll do it. It made a change in and, my feeling and about And I you. would also like to say that we, I started doing this in September yeah. and just stopped doing it about three weeks ago. Is it only three weeks? Because I've yeah. noticed well, for a while. Well, he said there was a, sl a slide where for yeah. a while it was just when guests and then no, and I know what he, little none at all. And then he started wearing bad jeans and sneakers and then a, a, like a jacket over it. Yeah. But it just lost its whole... The effect was gone. Yeah, he looks like a school kid. Carol Leifer asked me how come I wasn't dressed nicely. Yeah. Why aren't you dressing up? It's cool. I, got, I, what you, what you, I haven't been feeling good lately. Oh, I haven't been feeling good lately. Okay. I've decided to look it. Yeah, we're going to get back to it. Yeah, I mean... It, so you weren't even dressing that way for the guests? No, I told you. I, I completely slid <laughs> down, you know. I no longer care about my appearance. <laughs> yeah, well, it, I do. Pop, 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 pop. All right, I'll, I'll snap back up. I'll snap two again. Yeah, lay out your clothes for the week on Sunday. Then you don't have to think about it. I just wonder what it means in terms of, you know, your authority. None. If you say that this is the way it's supposed to be, and then he just decides not to. A wise old sage said to me that the problem on this show is that everyone you hire, you bring on the air, and you make little stars out of them. Uh -huh. okay, from the red, the Howard What happens is <laughs> that I have celebrities. <laughs> and, so uh, how can you tell your stars what to do? Well, imagine if you had a show full of stars. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So you can't say to Gary, dress nicer and get me some goddamn <laughs> coffee right now. He's like, wait a second. I do appearances. <laughs> I get I hotel never, rooms. I never, ever, blah, blah, ever blah, blah, blah. rejected an offer from you to get your food or anything. There's this never, is my costume. There's never anything that you ever told me to do that I felt was too low for me. Do you feel your outfit is your costume? Is that it for the show? In other words, this is you. No, I got look. lazy. It's hard. Right. I got lazy. Right. I wasn't but feeling good. But you cared for... about the show. I wasn't. Fe... I care okay. very much about the show. You don't feel good because you, you don't go to bed early. Has the level of the show gone down at all since I stopped dressing well? Yes. You're a liar. Okay. Well, you we're lie. not talking Prove about it. necessarily Cite, on the air. Cite, you asked me a question. Cite an example. You. Cite an Excuse example. Excuse me. Let me point out something. No, the, I, I don't even remember purpose, how you got here, you Malika the lover. The <laughs> of him dressing well was not for on air. Right. It was for his work outside he, he of the studio. He doesn't even know why he's supposed to dress up. I he do, thinks it's supposed to be why. in here. No, I know it's not for in here. I know it's for the salespeople. Tom will look at me in a different way. Right. But nobody looked at me in a different way, I'm Did telling you. Did you give it? I'll That's go wrong. back again. Yeah, I did it for six months. I'll go back again. Nobody looked at you in a different way. I don't agree with that. Everybody assessment. was saying that you looked better, you looked more professional, they had a different attitude about you. Nobody yeah. had a different attitude about me. They might have said, I look, of course you look better if you do I don't know that. what you, I don't, but I no told one had you, a different attitude, but I you will You asked it. me a question. But there's no argument, because I will do it again. Has the show suffered since you yes. started dressing? I said yes. You called based, me a liar. Based on what? I'm basing it on the fact that I see that you get less respect around here than ever. You can, and you were starting to get example. more respect before when example. you wore your suit. I saw a general tendency to see people treat you with a little more respect Tom actually because you were just like a producer. Said he liked it. Yeah. I saw an overall vibe that you had gone from a total buffoon to something less <laughs> than a buffoon. A semi-idiot. Yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> I missed the vibe, but I can bring it back. All right. I thought that there was more of a vibe. I can bring it back. Do I whatever can... you want. I wouldn't want Whatever to do you that. want, you're a star. I'm not going to tell you what to do. <laughs> Listen, I feel I feel uncomfortable uh, telling you what to do. No, you don't. You're very, you don't very, feel, you're you, very, very celebrated. There's never been a moment in your life where you felt uncomfortable telling me anything. I love hearing Tom talk about fashion, especially since his tie don't work. Look at this. <laughs> Jackie Martling's wild 78-minute comedy CD or cassette is only ten dollars plus three dollars shipping and handling. Buy two, get one free. Call one eight hundred. 323-KING. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's got two great shows that go great together. Talk Soup, followed by E! News Daily. Let's walk. Well, that sounds newsworthy. That's right. Steve follows John every day of the week. 
So catch Talk Soup at 9, then E! News Daily at 9.30. It's clips from your daily talk shows followed by up-to-the-minute entertainment news all in one hour. So remember, after Talk Soup, stick around for E! News Daily starting at 9, only on E! The police took her away to jail and everything. She's just posed nude. Get every buck you can. The Gossip Show, weeknights at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, right here on E! It's new, it's weird, it stinks! Yes, everybody's playing new stink and stare from Bark's Root Beer. The 3D game that stinks when you scratch it and turns 3D when you stare at it. Free inside specially marked 12 packs of Bark's Root Beer, the one with bite. Scratch and sniff some musty old bones and you might see a 3D skull. Cool. Stare at a 3D cow and smell the freshly cut hay. Hey. Keep staring because you could win $10,000. <laughs> so pick up Bark's today and play stink and stare. It'll change the way you look at Root Beer. It set the standard in do-it-yourself books, but now... We've made the best even better. Introducing the all-new Home Repair and Improvement Series from Time Life Books. With new color illustrations, step-by-step -step instructions, and a new spiral binding so books lay flat, it's never been easier to save money and create the home you've always wanted. You'll learn how to build a deck your family will enjoy for years. The tricks of the trade to install a new patio. Call now to examine decks, porches, and patios free for 15 days. Keep it for the special low TV price of just $1.99. Use your credit card and get this Stanley tape measure absolutely free. Other volumes will follow. Keep only those you want. The new home repair and improvement series from Time Life Books. We've made the best even better. Call 1-800-592-0099 now to get decks, porches, and patios for just $1.99. That's 1-800-592-0099. Gary, I think if you dress better, it might help. In, so John had not. no better respect for me when I dress better. I don't think I so. I do respect you, Gary. I, I don't know, but did you respect right, me look, any listen. more or less by dressing better? I, I think you should dress a little neater. But did you respect me any more because I did? Be honest. Uh, I, I, no, I exactly. mean, you know, I, 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 that's the guy. But I don't, Gary, think Howard, I don't think Howard's concerned about me. That's a loaded me. question. I don't think he's concerned well, about me. If you say to someone, do you respect me more because I'm dressed better, the, the point is that someone is always going to say, no, I respect you. It doesn't make a difference no. what you wear. It's a subtle thing. I it's told you I was going to get. I told respect. you I was going to start dressing. And how, I, 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 it's not an argument. I, think, I told right, you I would okay, dress. Okay, all right. I'm not resisting. <laughs> I don't think you're talking about me. But anyway. you just don't do it anyway. So what's the difference? You do resist. Tom, what is here it, comes Tom? Tom. Here's our it's general manager. It's the room or the dress. <laughs> Hi, Tom. It's the dress. It's the dress. It's the dress. Tom respected me more. People definitely <laughs> respect, respect, respond. Respected. No. Uh, respond. Differently to people on the basis of their dress. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I mean, people, I mean, business people are supposed to dress like business people. And Gary is a business person. And Gary's kind of in a mix between business and creative, and right. I think that he does himself well by dressing better. Thank you. You're right, Tom. I, I think Gary's an a-hole, and he's me. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, I understand what you're saying, and I'm in full agreement. Once I got respond out, it was fine. <laughs> when Gary walks into your office and he's wearing a suit and tie, you sort of feel like, hey, I shouldn't blow him off. I, I feel like I, I you don't feel, feel like you're like, talking to a kid. What? I'm, I'm going to try and treat Gary with the most respect I can give him anyway. Thanks. But, right. but I think of Gary me, as a 20 year old. around the office right. and the accountant. And not only that, he's constantly meeting with, new people. Better, he might looks have. better for the station and for the show. Right. If he looks better when he's Right. He, he meets he a lot of uh, business people. He meets right. sponsors. All right, you want the truth? Yeah. I outgrew my last set of clothes. Is that right? No. <laughs> all right, all right, very good. You know, right. I love hearing Tom talk about fashion, especially since his tie don't work. Look at that. His <laughs> <laughs> tie don't work. But he's got a tie, and that's what, the point, Gary Puppet. That's very nice. All right, listen, I've had enough of this. I don't want to talk about our okay. interstice squabbles. Interstice. <laughs> interstice <laughs> squabbles. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It <laughs> What does he mean your tie don't work? I don't know. I gotta ask for that. So, Gary, you gonna change your outfit? Yeah, I'll start dressing better. I mean, I've been, you know, 
I've been meaning to, just haven't getting around to it. Well, didn't you say that you were waiting for something? I remember you telling me not too long ago you were waiting for something, like Mary was going to buy you some new clothes. I mean, you had said something like that. put her in the back of the bus? Actually, Mary did buy me a new jacket. I wore it twice. It's a great-looking jacket. But you just stopped wearing it.